Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I title this message, The Father Who Loves and Appreciates His Family. Those of us, we can see the good as well as spoiled fruit on someone's tree. A man who loves his family is a man who also, I'm finding out, loves his creator. He's got a personal faith. He is praying whether we know it or not. He has times in his life where he feels a bit challenged by God, but yet he still trusts in him. He is a protector. He is one who is generous, kind in spirit. He is a man that brings peace into the home. He is not one filled with drama, and he has definitely dealt with his traumas. This type of man, for some of you all, does not exist. You haven't experienced someone like this. This type of man is someone that you hope that your child or children's father will one day become a man who loves and appreciates his family. When I take a look at Bible verses dealing with fatherhood, my eyes take me to Psalm 103 verse 13. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord listen closely, shows compassion to those who fear him. I will tell you one of the root causes of the issues that arise in families is there is no love and or appreciation for one's creator. There is no fear that God can do things that will bring a man to his knees. There is no reverence for the faith. There are those men who allow ego to suffocate the love that they could have. They allow ego to step in and take away what little appreciation they may have once had for family. When pride shows up, one will fall. There is evidence that many a man lost their families due to a number of things. Addiction being one of them. Addiction took away what good that was there. The woman at one point may have thought that the father of her children was a good man, was a decent man, a righteous man. But he allowed his flesh to override his spirit. He may not have had good examples around him who loved and appreciated their families. And so he continued on with hurting his family just as he had been hurt, just as he had witnessed his own father hurt his family. When we have these individuals that are deemed respectful, appreciative, loving, and kind, these, once again, are men who have a trust in God, a personal relationship, may have been saved, sanctified, and Holy Spirit-filled. Others may not have any type of personal faith. They just got good sense that 
to love and appreciate one's family is just the right thing to do. The righteous who walks in his integrity, blessed are his children after him, Proverbs 27. Even having a righteous mindset, children are watching, children are listening. They see their daddy blessed and they too want to be blessed. But where some fathers go wrong is they're either too strict or too lax. They break their children's spirit. They break their wives' hearts. Some of these fathers are cautioned. They are reminded of God's scripture, Ephesians 6, 4. Fathers, do not, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. How many fathers, let's just be honest, sit down and have a conversation that is biblically based that gives children sound wisdom? doctrine. No, let's just be honest, many fathers sit before screens, before devices, wanting to be left alone. Are some of you all guilty as charged? How much time are you really spending talking with a child, instructing a child, encouraging a child, loving on a child in a appropriate way. Children, many of them were stirred up, not for righteousness, but for unrighteousness because a father just simply did not bother to learn even how to love and appreciate his family. Didn't want to read a book, didn't want to watch a show and take notes, didn't want to sit before counselors. I got this, he says. You got nothing. But a hurt child who one day grows up and doesn't want anything to do with his or her father. If one humbles his or herself before the Lord and says, I'm guilty as charged, Lord, order my steps, guide me towards some help. I need to be a better man, a better husband, a better father. God will do just that. Some feel like it's a lost cause. I'm not going to be able to get that son or that daughter back. The Lord says, but you can if you just simply say three words. I love you. How many Young ladies would have never even given a stripper pole a second thought had a father said, I love you and backed his love up with action. How many daughters would have never ended up in the arms of a young man who said, I love you, I care for you before she was ready? Had a father taken up time and sat down and asked questions, took up time with his daughter, with his son, took him out for some ice cream, not with mother in tote, just a little one-on-one time. How are you doing really? Is there something I can help you with? Is there something that is troubling you right now? And without judgment, he gives his counsel to his son, to his daughter. Those those moments are lasting ones when a father takes up time with his child. 
Hear, O sons, a father's instruction, and be attentive, that you may gain insight. For I give you good precepts. Do not forsake my teaching. When I was a son with my father, tender, the only one in the sight of my mother, he taught me and said to me, Let your heart hold fast my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom. Get insight. Do not forget, and do not turn away from the words of my mouth. Proverbs 4, 1 through 9. Genesis eighteen nineteen. For I have chosen him, that he may command his children and his household after him, to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice, so that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has promised him. If a father provides a good example of what it means to be a righteous man with the guidance of the one true God, we would see less men as well as boys in places that are filled with sin, walking or driving intoxicated, we would see less men and their sons in jails. We would see more men and more sons in positions of power. God, he makes that sort of thing happen. If you ever looked at a group that looked like you or maybe didn't look like you, and you said to yourself, how is it that this man got in this position of power during most challenging times? How is it that this man was able to get the hook up by people who don't look like us? Oh, the things that a God can do. A righteous, loving, merciful one true God, what he can do. An almighty one, the beginning as well as the end, the Alpha and the Omega. He can cut a path for a man who others would least expect. And sons following after him, whether biological or adopted, can take up the reins and be the ambassador for Christ that God has called him to be. But a man who is wayward in the faith, a man filled with fleshly desires, a man who esteems those outside more than those inside his home, is a disturbed man, a troubled man, a man that may have experienced his share of abuse, a man who runs away from his very self, a man who is consumed by his devices, who is not the least bit interested in the one true God, is a man who dies a sorrowful heart, a man who is not a man who is like David, who is after God's heart, but a man who is nothing more than a follower of Satan, a Luciferian, if you will, a man who believes the God of lies rather than the God of truth, a man who bristles when a woman speaks to him and asks him questions, who wants honesty. He is that man who goes into his grave prematurely sooner rather than later because someone prays, take this man away from me. I don't want him. He is not a father for my children. God does that sort of thing and raises up someone who is better than that man. And that man becomes nothing more than a distant memory. For some men walking above ground, they became nothing more than a distant memory because years ago they said they didn't want to be fathers. And they made sure that they did not do anything that was fatherlike. They made sure that they distanced themselves in every way they could, emotionally, physically, monetarily, spiritually. And then 
they became jealous later on and wanted to have a relationship with sons and daughters who are looking at them and saying, you are not a father to me. You are a man that I know, a man that I've seen in a photograph, but my father, and this man could be a new man that God has placed in that child's life or in that adult son or daughter's life, my father this man right here raised me. This man right here cared for me. This is my father who loves me. May not be my biological father, my spiritual father who listened to my cries, listened to my pleas, was there when you dropped the ball. Does a father want to hear that one day? Well, you may want to step it up because there are those who have said this sort of thing to their biological fathers. Or someone else had told them, this is why your son and this is why your daughter doesn't want to be involved with you because you did not show love and appreciation for your family. Rather, your family was a burden for some of these men. They cursed, they cussed, they complained, they eye rolled, they deep sighed. There you go again making that noise child there you go again in my pocket son there you go again wife asking me for yet another thing for our daughter they resented their families over time god knew their hearts some of them they tried to cover up how they really felt but the damage was already done children saw Children knew. Children even made excuses for a while, went along with their mother's programming, said, no, that's not what you see. Dad loves you. No, that is not correct. Your dad appreciates you. But I can't tell. I can't see. I don't hear. I can't feel. God said that rather than chase after a father's love. Sever the emotional ties, the toxic ties, the dysfunction, and come and follow me. And so we say, Abba, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. No, he can't take everything away that we don't want to let go of. Let go of the pain. Let go of the I wish daddy was. Let go of the heartbreak from yesteryear. Let go of the grudge. Speak to your heavenly father. He wants to hear from you. He takes our burdens from us. He says, I was there. I was in the house when. No matter what stories they come up with, no matter what lies, I was there. I was there to dry your tears. I was the one who gave you the strength to pack up and walk out. I was the one who protected you from all harm and danger. I was the one who humbled a father's heart and opened up the door for you to return. Prodigal son, prodigal daughter. It was God behind the man that didn't have a plan, that didn't know how to be a father. It was God. That dried up even his tears when he looked at his sons and daughters who made unwise decisions. It was God who gave that woman the endurance to stay with that man. Even at times when she said, I don't know if I can continue to deal with what is happening in my family. The father who doesn't discipline his son or daughter, the father who is very nonchalant, who doesn't really care, who is not the strict father, who's not much of a father at all, he is definitely breaking God's biblical principles. Proverbs 19:18 Discipline your son, for there is hope. 
Do not set your heart on putting him to death. Joshua 24, 15. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your fathers served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You see, we have the nonchalant, lazy, lax father, the one who criticizes everyone else but himself. He is not close to the one true God. He may have been at one time or maybe not at all. So he is the one who makes excuses for his evil. He says, well, I did it. And so it's no big deal. I mean, my son, he does some things, but he'll be all right. I mean, look at me. I turned out all right. God doesn't want all right. He wants righteous. God doesn't want excuses. He wants a man who holds himself accountable. God doesn't want the liar. He wants the one who tells the truth. You're not much of a father when you're not honest with yourself. You're not much of a father when you don't want to take responsibility for what you do not do. It's very easy to sit back, put your hands behind your head and put your feet up. You're a sluggard when you're not a father who is proactive, who is engaging, who is emotionally available. You've got to work to be a father. Somebody should have told some folks that. Yeah, you worked at your job. And you worked on your projects, but you have to work on a relationship with your children. That message is for some, not all. The man who loves and appreciates his family, that goes over his head because he knows I do that. (laughs) Hallelujah. But the man who doesn't, he knows that God's not happy with him. And he, as quiet as is kept, isn't very happy with himself. If you this day don't feel like your daddy is much of a daddy, if you this day reflect back on how your father could have loved you, could have held you, could have showed you a good example, but didn't, don't you worry, you have a father. A father in heaven, a father who wants to meet you on the other side if you would just get your act together. <laughs> Psalm 68, 5, 6, father of the fatherless and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God settles the solitary in a home. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in a parched land. Some of you all know all too well what a drought is like and spiritually some are in a drought. God wants to water your garden. He wants to give you wisdom. He wants to put some love in your heart if you would just let him. He wants you, most of all, to appreciate your family. There are so many men who would have loved to have a daughter. So many men who would have loved to have a son. So many men who would have loved to have a wife. Some who would have loved to keep a wife and you who have these things, you who have these people in your life, you don't care much. You complain. You talk about how they should give you when what have you given them lately? A roof over your head, you would have given yourself that roof had you not had your family. Paying an electric bill, well, you would have paid an electric bill had you not had your family. We're talking about giving to a family some substance, 
something memorable, something that they could take even to their graves, something they could reflect on in their last days. Oh, what daddy did for me. Oh, the love that daddy put upon me. He appreciated us. He respected us. He was a wonderful father, a great friend. He was a disciplinarian, but he was also a counselor who just provided us with so much mentally, physically, and spiritually. Oh, how much we love our daddies. You know, for some of you all, that's nothing more than a fantasy. I wrote, say goodbye to dad. A bold book. A book that if you were a delusional father, you didn't like that book. Because that exposed truth. It showed up and showed out. And it also shamed. And for those who blamed, God said, you don't have to blame any longer. I need for you to be free. I need you to be aware that I am breaking the ties that bind. You are no longer chasing after the wind. The woman on the cover of the book say goodbye to dad. The window is open and the wind is coming through. Or maybe it's closed. Either way, she's no longer chasing after the wind. She settled in her mind, in her body, and in her spirit concerning her father who was not there emotionally and or physically. The children, the children who felt like a father wasn't much of a father or a father who was very much a father, but just didn't know how to communicate, didn't know how to appreciate. Well, God says, I'm here. If you are a good father, and some of you all believe that's what you are, if we were to interview your sons or daughters, hopefully they would be able to say the same thing. Proverbs 13, 22 says, and we're going to see how good of a father they are. <laughs> A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. If the sinner doesn't want to be generous, if the sinner is stingy, if the sinner is making up excuses as to why he can't do and won't do, his wealth is laid up. Oh yes, it's laid up for the righteous. It doesn't have to come from the biological father. It can come from that father who was critical from afar. He may not have laid up any money for his own children, but somebody's child's going to get that. The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice. He who fathers a wise son will be glad in him. If you fathered, a wise son or daughter, what are you so upset about? You should be grateful. You should be appreciative that God is using that son or daughter to turn some people toward him. And even if he had to use your story, your experience in order to get some people right with him, then consider it good rather than fight it. Don't fight the truth. Don't make up excuses. Once again, if a father sincerely loves and appreciates his family, he is going to appreciate the honesty. 
he is going to want to work on what his family is offering constructive criticism about. If a father truly loves and appreciates his family, he is not going to make excuses, but he's going to be proactive and do what's right. If a father truly loves and appreciates his family, he is going to be there for them. He is going to protect them. He is not going to allow people on the outside to come in and have their way with them. If a father truly loves and appreciates his family, he then loves and appreciates, of course, his creator. Am I getting through to someone? How is it that you want to be honored, father, mother, but yet you don't honor your God? For all who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. Romans 8, 14. It doesn't matter what comes out of that man's mouth who claims to be a father. If he is not led by the spirit of God, he's not a son of God. It doesn't matter how he brags about all of what he's done materially and what he did back in the day. What has he done lately? Has he been emotionally present? It doesn't matter that he stands on his soapbox before men and women and preach and teach. But yet, is his preaching and teaching reaching his sons and daughters? All of what a man says means nothing to the one true God. It is what is in his heart. And God sees a man's heart. And even though he can use flowery speech to draw men and women in, God, he knows the truth. The lies will only spread but for so far. And then here comes the truth. I know some of you all are disappointed. I know some of you all are hurt because a father just didn't take you to the finish line. He got you. He got you over there somewhere at the 20 meter mark or something like that. But he didn't get you to the finish line. God had to take you the rest of the way. He gave up when you made a mistake. He gave up when he felt like you shamed him. He gave up on you when you didn't do right the last time with his money. He gave up on you when he heard through the grapevine that you said this and that you did that. He gave up on you. When you fell by the wayside, he gave up on you when you fell weak to the enemy's snares, but God didn't give up on you. Hallelujah. (laughs) God didn't give up on you. He didn't want to take, he didn't want to take responsibility for his actions, but God said, don't worry about it. I'll take up responsibility. Because you love me, because you fear me, says the Lord. You've got favor. I've got a father for you. I've got somebody who will love and appreciate you. Think about those men along the way who counseled you. Think about times where you sat as a young man and there were men around you who were fathers. Think about the time... When there was a woman who acted like both a mother and father in your life. Didn't judge you. She listened to you. You may have judged her. Think about the times where God had put his angels all around you when you should have died. When he could have punished you for your lack. For your disrespect. For your disregard. For your ignoring, for your judging and shaming while you are talking about somebody judging and shaming you. But God, 
We know that the scripture says that children are to obey parents. And we know that the scripture says that husbands are to love wives. There are so many scriptures that God has encouraged the righteous man. Notice I said righteous man to follow because the unrighteous man, this need not apply to you. This is why you don't get what you want. How can you demand that children who are wayward in the faith that you didn't train up in the way that they should have been? How is it that you want scriptures to apply to your life when you don't do what you're supposed to do? What God wants you to do. This Bible need not apply to the unrighteous man, to the rebellious man, to the man who can't stand them Christians. You don't get that kind of honor. God is not just a loving God, but he's also a God of justice. He is a God who says, vengeance is mine. Why, why, oh father? Why, oh father, did my earthly father do these things? God said, vengeance is mine. Why, oh Lord, did we witness what we witness as children? I hear some of you all in the spirit. I don't care if you're 20, 50, 70, 80 plus years old. I hear some of you all in the spirit. It was decades ago and I got wounds on my mind that my father put upon me. God says, I can heal your wounds if you would let me. You're never too old to put your hands up and say, God, I need you. It doesn't make you less of a man or less of a woman. It makes you strong in Christ. Appreciate and love what God has given you. Life is too short. One day you're going to get the phone call. And someone is going to be in their graves. Or someone is going to be in his or her grave. A fool despises his father's instruction, but whoever heeds reproof is prudent. Proverbs 15, 5, Psalm 103, 1 verses 22. Of David, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, Father, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. How many folks have been told you don't look nothing like your age? You got energy like 10 young men. God gives you that. God reminds us, 1 John 2, 15, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him, Daddy. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 13, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing if I give away all I have. And if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. How many of you all saw a father who did not show love? He was impatient and he was unkind. He was envious and he was boastful he was arrogant and he was rude he insisted on his own way you know he was the king of his castle he was irritable and he was resentful 
Guilty, 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 says the Lord. Those who have overcome the evil one, God be with you and continue to be with you. Those who have humbled themselves and have seen themselves in this message, your instruction is to turn your heart toward the one true God, to confess your sin and to repent. For some of you all, God has been knocking on your heart to reach out to your children. Your children have a long track record, a long history of reaching out to you. But now it is time for you to reach out to them in whatever way you feel comfortable. If it's nothing more than a mere gift. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm talking to some of you all. Some of you all, the Lord says that you would feel like your children loved you and appreciated you if you would be the one who made the first move. The Lord says that, yes, there was the shaming and there was the blaming, but God said that he had to allow these things to happen to humble a rebellious man, to cause a man to look at his situation and to stop deceiving himself into believing something that is incorrect. God says that I need you to see yourself as I see you. And for some of you all, you saw yourselves in the books. Some of you all saw yourselves in the movies. You saw the ugly of yourself, to be more specific, in the conversations that you heard or overheard. And God said, rather than say, that's me, Lord Jesus, that's me. You said, that's not me. I don't know what you're talking about. I've never. And God said, and so I had to bring about shame. Because that's what God does. God, he chastens us, right? He chastises us with that rod of correction, doesn't he? What's behind closed doors has a way of showing up and showing out among men and women. If you would just turn your heart toward the one true God, you wouldn't be the one that was or is exposed. God says there are liars among us that want the world to believe that they were good. Wants the world to believe that I am the best, that I am the greatest. Got t-shirts trying to make them feel good. Stop telling people lies. Stop holding them up when God is chastising them. I told some people in other audio, I said, stop standing in front of the narcissist. Stop defending the narcissist. Stop painting a delusional picture for your sons and daughters to view of a narcissistic father. Stop telling them that it's okay and it's all right what father is doing when we know better. Stop telling them that daddy was the greatest and the most this and the most that when you don't even know the truth yourself because you've only been perpetuating the lies. God is doing a number on some men before they close their eyes. They've, they've gotten away with some things for far too long. They abused, they used. And God said, enough. Enough. God is not a God who is like a protester who holds up a sign and wants folks to read that sign, but that sign is not necessarily accurate. Mm. The sign isn't necessarily accurate. You don't have mercy on individuals that God is whipping. I know some of you all don't want to hear that. Some individuals, this isn't a season of praise. This isn't a season 
of God giving them a defender. For some, this season for them is the butt whipping that their mama didn't give them. No matter what color they are. Because we saw red, white, black, and yellow getting hurt, getting beaten. And it wasn't always a police officer either. And some of us said, mmm, their dirt is catching up to them. We said, oh no, their dirt is catching up to them. A man who loves and appreciates his family is going to give his children good gifts. Matthew seven eleven. if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? While you are confessing sin and repenting, why don't you ask God to give you something good? Mm-hmm. Let God pick your gift out. God gives those kind of gifts that don't rest that aren't stolen. (laughs) Lord Jesus. He gives those kind of gifts that a thief wouldn't want. He gives those kind of gifts that don't date themselves. Ask God. Ask God. I thank you as always for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube in a winter prize seven. Feel free to like subscribe, comment. We do welcome giving on this channel and thank you in advance.